Hey everybody, this is Tom again in Western North Carolina, and it's Thursday, I think August the 26th. Anyways, I um, apologize for being so slow on this project, but I uh, had company over the weekend and this and that led to this and that. Anyways, I had to go tow a neighbor out this morning, but it was just a hand job. We got it out with just to come along. Anyways, um, we're move, I'm moving on with this rocking chair. And you see, I've got my chair put together and I got it sitting up here on my uh, level surface, what I think is a level, a level plane. And it turned out that my, uh, drill press table that I use that I think is my level surface wasn't big enough for this rocking chair. And so I've got two pieces of plywood laid on here to make it bigger. Got them held down with this weight. And the reason I think that they're level is I've got these two squares set on here and if I go back here, these are just like what you call winding sticks. If I go back here and look across, look across the top of those, and they're right exactly in line with each other, I think that that, that these things are level or in the same plane, whatever, however you say that. Anyways, that's, that's how you determine that. You cite, you know, winding sticks. Winding sticks work for that. That reminds me, I'm getting something else out here. Put it there, talk to you about it in a few minutes. Anyway, so the next thing we've got to do to this chair is we've got to level it up. And at the same time that we level it up, we can adjust it for how it is going to just sit at rest. And um, I don't know how to exactly tell you to figure this out, but I just know from experience in making these enough that we need to cut some off of these back legs to get the chair to have the right, just normal sit, you know, the, what, however it sits when it's just sitting there. And so I've determined and with my notes, that that measurement is uh, 11 sixteenths of an inch. And I've got my two nuts. I think they must be for a 7 sixteenths bolt, but they measure 11 sixteenths and they're what I'm gonna use as my levelers. You remember on that other chair, remember on that other chair, we use uh, three quarters, but this we're gonna use 11. And so what I've done, I've got my little uh, pencil jig thing. And I'm and notice my chair isn't level. This legs up a little bit. But I've got this set here on the high side of this. Don't have it set just exactly right. And they're about right there. And I'm going to draw... Even on this high side, I'm going to draw all around this. And it's not very much here on the back. It's just, a, you know, a heavy sixteenth of an inch. But I might take that off it, if you're, if it turns out, if you can get your legs to be exactly in line with each other in a flat plane, it's a little bit easier to make your marks when you go to put your rock, mark your rockers on there. Anyways, so there I've marked those, and now I'm gonna mark these. These are gonna be, these back, these back legs are gonna be sawed off, just like we did on the other chair. OK, 
okay? And these ones on the front here are probably, it's too small probably to saw it off, but when we get our chair flipped over, we probably uh, take them off with a rasp or something like that. So now the next thing I'm going to do while I've got the chair in this position is I'm going to mark the depth and that's measured you know from down from the bottom up I'm going to met I'm going to mark the depth of the mortises that we're going to cut with you know for the for the rocker and anyways the depth that depth is one and three quarters of an inch. One and three quarters of an inch. And so I've got me a block, very carefully made, that's exactly an inch and three quarters. And I'm gonna set this pencil thing that I used to just make this mark with on top of that block. And I'm just gonna make a mark in the back where I think that rocker's gonna be right there, like that. And I'm holding this thing down again. And then I'm gonna mark it here. Gotta mark all four legs, front and back. I'll just go right here right now. And you, you don't want to make these marks super dark because they're going to have to disappear someday. If I had some kind of weight to put on here to hold this, I could use two hands, but I'm doing it one-handed. One more, I got one more to do. Okay, now we've got The top or the bottom, I don't know what you exactly call it, of that mortise. If we flip this chair over, it's going to look like the bottom of the mortise. Anyways, we've got those all marked, and they're, theoretically, they're in a plane with each other. Because we marked them off of this table that, you know, I think is level. Or not level, it doesn't have to be level, it just needs to be in a plane. And we just transferred that plane line up to these marks here. So I'm just going to let that go now. So right now, I'm sure we got a little bit more time left on this video. I'm going to show you some things about the rockers. You know, you see, well, one thing I have maybe failed to say all along is how thick are the rockers? How thick are they? Well, they're five eighths of an inch. Maybe I've got it written right there. Five-eighths of an inch thick. And that's just approximate. Doesn't have to be exact, but close to that. You know, these legs are only an inch and a half. And they're probably a little light on that. So we can't, you know, we can't be putting one-inch rockers on or even three-quarters. Probably be too big. Anyways, one of the things about this type of rocking chair, the way you put these rockers on and the thickness of these rockers, they are out of favor in a certain way in that the rockers are so narrow that it's reputed, you know, that they cut the floor. You know, and some people refer to these rockers as razor rockers. And some people call them linoleum cutters that I have found, you know, and that's all true because there's a lot of pressure just in a small area. But if you just have a little rug as big as a, uh, a mat, a doormat, like what you put in front of your door to wipe your feet on, if you just put a little uh, indoor, outdoor, one of those things down, this rocker, the way it sets, 
it just hits in a small area, it will sit right on one of those and the, your floor is protected and you have a real smooth rock out of it. But anyways, I don't know if I showed this before, but this is a set of rockers that's already been cut out. And I put them together, I screw them together, and you can see where I've put the screws, you know, outside of the lines. And I can cut up to the, close to there, and I can do all my finish work getting these smoothed up, getting these smoothed up here and here, and they'll be pretty identical. It's important, it's important that this spot and this spot be in line with each other. You know, like with a straight edge, those two spots, and then this whole bottom needs to be completely just smooth in a smooth radius. Those are the critical places. Other than that, they could be any shape you wanted. So I, I believe that I have decided not to use this set because these posts on this chair, the posts on this chair are, are white oak. And I, I know these slats are red oak, but I've I searched through my pile of stuff and I've got some uh, white oak rockers, rocker blanks, and I've picked them out to use them to match the chair and I've also found uh, some white oak arms and so here's you know my drawing and I've used a pattern you know I made a I made a rocker pattern and you probably need to do that but maybe not you might get by with a paper pattern if you're just going to make like one chair but you need that radius to be a long, a smooth radius. It's 40 inch radius. And then even as good as I think that pattern might be made after I drew this on there, I laid a, I laid a straight edge on here and connected, made better lines right here and right here to make sure that those are in a straight line with each other. Now when I go to, and I'm going to cut this out, you know, as carefully as I can. But then when I go to shape it up, to actually start using in my chair, I'm going to make sure that these two places are in line with each other. And also square, like that. They're going to have to be square. You don't want them at some kind of weird angle. They should be square. And these bottoms, when you do the bottoms, they should be square also. You don't want it leaning over to the side. Now one of the tools, when I go to sand those and get them smoothed up, one of the tools that I use, this looks pretty pretty funky but this I'm not sure how this got made but this is just two rockers was two rockers I guess that I cut some pieces out of it must have been some kind of failure I don't know can't remember but it's got right here and probably out here too it's got the 40 inch radius right there and so when I go to sand this, I could put this in a vise. And see, I've got a piece of sandpaper stapled on there. When I put that in a vise, I can sand that. Now I'm going to do some pre-work to get them big bumps out of there. But when I do the final finish, that's the tool I'm going to use. And it's better than a flat block because a flat block, you could potentially, you know, get some flat spots in this. So this is a pretty handy tool that you could pretty easily make yourself. That's one thing I wanted to show you. And then a couple of, a couple of other tools that I want you to show you right now is 
to when we go to fine tune the mortises that we're going to saw out of these bottoms this tool right here i call a bottom sander and we're going to have this chair flipped upside down and the mortises are going to be look like this and this tool here and what it is it's just a straight board and the most important thing about it is that it's straight this way. You don't want it to be curved this way at all, either way. It can be off a, a little bit side to side, but not much. But you want it straight this way because you're going to connect. You're putting this, those two straight places on the rockers. Well, you're going to try to connect. You're going to try to line these two mortises up in a straight line also. And so this tool here, and you notice that I've got sandpaper glued onto this side. And I'm going to change this sandpaper on this one. These are wore out. But I'm going to put a new piece of sandpaper on here. And it so happens I am lucky enough to have a roll of sandpaper like this. If you don't have this, you know, if you just have sheets of sandpaper, that's fine. And what you'll just, if you had this piece, you know, you just put your, uh, I don't know, how big is a sheet of sandpaper? 12 inches or 11 and a half or 11. You just glue 11 inch piece on there. That's enough. And you could maybe glue two on there. One here and one down here so you can sand both at the same time. But that's all that is. It's a piece of wood with sandpaper glued on it. And I believe that's 100 grit. That's, that's enough. You, 80 might be okay. But I, I use 100. I don't know. But that's a tool you're going to need. I mean, you don't absolutely need it, but it's the tool that I'm going to use. And then another tool... And it's also a straight board, both ways, if you can do it. And more importantly, this one needs to be straight in this direction, in this direction, because this is what I've got sandpaper here and here, not on the bottom, not on the bottom, just here and here. And this one is what I call a side sander. And it's the one that's going to if I, this is my mortise, it's the one that I'm going to use to sand the sides of my mortise to fine fit them. And I believe it's also 100 grit sandpaper. I guess it could be 80. Be what 80? It probably could be 80 also. But you just get two pieces of sandpaper and glue them on the side of the board. Now this board needs to be you know narrower than this than the mortise and so this board here's it's measuring seven sixteenths could be a half but we're going to cut that mortise the thickness of the rocker which is about five eighths you, your board's got to be narrower than five eighths so those are some tools that we're going to need the next step Another tool that most people have is a coping saw. This is the standard tool that people have and is readily available. And it's going to be the one that's used to cut the bottom of the mortise out. This is the mortise. You're going to cut the bottom of that mortise out with that tool. It needs to have, you know, you need to have a brand new blade that's sharp and fairly fine teeth. Um, the other tool, let me see what this is. The tool that I'm going to use to cut the down cut the sides of the mortise is this here hacksaw and it, it says this is 18 teeth 18 teeth per inch 18 teeth per inch 
And um, for me, it works good. The one thing about it is when you buy these hacksaw blades, there's a brand new one. It's got paint on it. That paint and the job that we're going to do use this saw for cutting down through this wood, that paint is like um, as wide as the curve. And so your saw, if you just take that saw and start sawing this in, you're going to get down in that cut and it's going to, it's going to jam. And it's going to feel just like it does if you don't have any set in your saw. And so what you need to do if you get if you buy yourself a brand new blade and do this just how I'm going to do it before you start sawing you need to take some kind of a sharp tool a scraper tool of some sort and scrape the paint off of that blade you know without destroying the teeth and you'll notice that this saw has no paint very little paint on the blade it's been taken off. This, this one never has been used for that. Now, if you're just doing metal, it doesn't matter because the metal will actually just scratch the paint off as you go. But the wood will not. So anyways, I'm just, uh, I guess right now I'm just showing you the tools that are going to be used like in the next step so that you can be uh, looking for those tools and making sure that you have them. Now, um, you know, I said that the standard tool for cutting the bottom of that mortise out is this tool here, coping saw, and I will show you that, but I actually use a, what I think is called a jeweler's saw. It looks kind of just like a coping saw, but it has a much finer blade on it. In that corner at the bottom of that, the two side cuts, a jeweler saw is you can get the blade so small that you can just put it in sideways and start sawing sideways. Where this one, you have to do a lot of fooling around to get your saw turn to go straight across sideways. So I'm actually going to use a jeweler saw. I'll show you the coping saw, but I'll maybe do one with a coping saw to show you guys. But if you'd like to buy tools or have other tools, the jeweler saw is a saw I'm going to use. And I've seen people in class with that jeweler saw. You know, I just take that jeweler saw and go and saw it one off. And everybody in the class goes, can I use that saw? And I go, yes. And some of the people can use it. And I've had at least one person that like three blades in a row within one minute has destroyed the blade. And that for, and some, somehow or another that sh tells me that that person has no idea, you know, what, how to saw. And so this, when we go to saw these out, Mark them out. Um, did I get that tool out? Yeah. Another tool, and I guess I'm rambling on, this is getting pretty long, but another tool that I'm going to use is this here tool. And this is a uh, frame and square that I have personally changed. And, I, and the big thing about it is that I have cut a notch right here and that right here this this right here is exactly in line with this right here and then I've done this and this allows me to set this across those two legs if I have these legs up in there and you'll see this I'll show this to you guys later but this is a tool I use and it allows me, to, this little notch allows me to set this on the top of the, when I've got that chair upside down, I, I can set this on the top of the rung, the top of the leg, 
and draw this line here. Or I can move it over on this side of the leg and draw this line here. Because we're going to have to draw those, we're going to have to make those lines, those marks, those up and down marks. And this is the tool that I use for that. You can use, there's other tools, you do not have to make this. The other way that you can do that, the same job that I'm going to do with that, is you can, you know, just have a straight edge and hold the straight edge, then have, have your square on top of the straight edge and maybe even clamp them together like that, maybe with a smaller spring clamp. And then you've got effectively that same tool you can mark here and here. I just, that's how we used to do it. We didn't, I never thought of the spring clamp, but we always used to use a straight edge and a square. But it just, uh, if you're doing a lot of them or you got a class when people are fumbling around and can't make things line up, this other tool had worked out good and somebody thought of it and I made one. I actually have two or three of them. I don't know where the other ones are at right now. Anyways, I guess that's enough for now. Um, we've been having some rain here. It's been good for us. Not too much. Anyways, um, I'm going to move on with this. I'm going to set my get a rig set up for, so I can flip this chair over and have it clamped down so that I can be working on, you know, the bottom of these legs. And I'm going to saw out and get my uh, rockers sawed out and smoothed up. And uh, so the next thing is, the next video is going to be about how to lay out the rockers on these, uh, the bottom of these legs. And then and then it'll be also how to saw them out. Should be able to lay them out and saw at least one out for you guys to see how to do that. All right, I'm sure this is getting pretty long. So I'm thankful for what I have. I got a haircut yesterday, you see. Cut my beard off. But anyways, uh, I'm thankful for all that. I hope you can be thankful too. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you another time. Bye.